Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to this session with me, Dr. Vaishnavi, your ENT faculty. Let me know if the audio-visual relay is fine and if everything is going smoothly on your end so that we can begin our session. Okay, so I think that everything is going well and it is working well. So we will begin our session by discussing the recall of the yesterday's NEET PG examination. First of all, take a pride in the moment and uh, say congratulations to yourself for having sailed through this difficult examination which you were preparing since a very, very long time. And uh, you have done it, you have made it, you have made it possible till the exam and you've done your best that you could. So just relax for now, enjoy the moment and enjoy the time that you have in your hand and just don't feel uh, too much stressed out of uh, what is the recall or how your ranks are, what is the prediction. Don't just go uh, bonkers over it, just uh, enjoy the situation that you have in hand that you have a free time you are done with the examination there is no worry just keep doing that and next whatever will happen will happen and those things are bound to happen so we are not going to discuss that at the moment okay so yeah let's begin with our recall for the neat pg examination but before that uh, let me just tell you one very important quick thing that we have a rank predictor so uh, you can step one is to enter your NEET PG score out of 800 and then your uh, roll number and you will get a predictive rank based upon the NEET PG 2023 estimated score and uh, to just get that estimated score you can take up this and it will be a good uh, analysis for yourself to know where you stand and what options do you have going ahead. Now you can pursue your ambitions with the AIMS, AIM NEXT or NEET PG examination which is a NEXT focused integrated subject approach uh, you know test and where we're going to do 200 plus classes, 400 plus hours and uh, it's going to be high yield MCQ class okay. So here we're going to have all the 19 educators all very nice educators friendly and uh, you know going to teach you very conceptually. So do look into this batch course for your benefits. You can use the code ENT Live to get another 10% off. So with this a quick disclaimer that here the aim is to get the maximum of the similar recall that you had in your examination. This might not be the same language and the same images but based on the students recall we have I have compiled all these things and I have put up this to you. Okay, now let us go to the question one by one and answer this. Yesterday I had done a recall session, but yes, I got a, a lot of updates from the students based on which I have modified in this recall. So maybe if you give me more updates, we can get more closer to the similar question which was asked. So let me know in the chat box if you think something else was asked or it was asked in a different way or if the, uh, you know, options were different. So can you tell me what was the mark structure? So the many of the students told me that they had marked this structure here and had asked what is this? Is this tubal tonsil? Is this fossa or frozen muller? Is this eustachian tubal opening or is this torus tubarius? Yes, all those who are there, can you please quickly uh, give me the answer in the chat box very quickly? So when we see this is the anatomy of nasopharynx where we do expect a standard question to come in and asking you the question on the anatomy of nasopharynx. When we go into the nasopharynx, the first structure that we see in the nasopharynx is the opening of eustachian tube. So this structure that you see here is the opening of eustachian tube. Now over the eustachian tube you have a cushion. This cushion is called as torus tuberius. Torus tuberius is formed by the salpingopharyngeus muscle and behind that you have a recess. This recess is called as fossa of Rosenmuller. So you will see this on the right half and the left half of the nasopharynx. You will be able to clearly appreciate the recess or fossa of Rosenmuller. Yes and Sayak you are correct. The question which majority of the students said me was marked for fossa of Rosenmuller while some were telling that there was a lymphoid tissue, pale lymphoid tissue, something like this bluish tissue near the opening of eustachian tube. 
which could be tubal tonsil while some told that no ma'am there was no lymphoid tissue there was clear cut fossa of Rosenmuller a depression marked and there was no lymphoid tissue so if you have seen that there is a clear cut depression like this it is definitely fossa of Rosenmuller but if you have to tell tubal tonsil you must see pale proliferative tissue so yes the answer for this question would be fossa of Rosenmuller and I think this is something that is quite easy as it's the most common site for nasopharyngeal carcinoma a site for hidden malignancy and usually not visible presenting to you primarily as a cervical lymphadenopathy great now let's go to the next question a child presented to you with biphasic strider the x-ray image is given below which of the following is the diagnosis this is a standard question which i think everybody should be able to answer is this laryngotracheobronchitis is this seen in epiglottitis is this seen in laryngomalacia is this seen in foreign body obstruction now you see there is a specific a typical sign what you see yes very good sayak dipanshi very good we know this is a specific sign which we call it as steeple sign and steeple sign occurs because of subglottic stenosis and why is that subglottic stenosis because of inflammation what inflammation is causing stenosis it is laryngotracheobronchitis which is caused by a viral infection the virus responsible for causing this is para influenza type 1 and type 2 so para influenza type 1 and type 2 are responsible for causing this particular laryngotracheobronchitis which we also call it as croup and here we see this sign which is called as steeple sign where do you what sign do you get in epiglottitis we all know that we get thumb sign in epiglottitis laryngomalacia typically on clinical examination what we see is omega shaped epiglottis this is not a radiological sign but this is a clinical sign so omega shaped epiglottis is a clinical sign it is not a radiological sign and foreign body obstruction would definitely show you some evidence of foreign body in the airway but here we don't have any of that so it's not a foreign body obstruction as well so this is a simple straightforward question which is telling to you that it is a group so first two questions i think it is relatively simple straightforward which we all know repeat questions nothing to worry about these two questions so okay let's go to the next one a patient had a negative Rinne's test on 256 and 512 hertz tuning fork but a positive Rinne on 1024 hertz. What is the airborne gap? Yes guys, come on answer in the chat box quickly. I have organized the questions that if there is no controversy, we will do it in the end so that we can discuss a lot about it. Now, the controversy is not there, the easy questions we have to do it in the end. So, first of all, there was no controversy. This means also there is no controversy. So, we will finish off these questions very quickly. Okay? Yes, so here when we know that when we are doing a tuning fork test, we are talking about Rinne's test. What is Rinne's test? It is a test that understands or helps us understand two things. One is air conduction. The second one is bone conduction. Normally, air conduction is greater than bone conduction, which means that air conduction is longer and louder than your bone conduction. When AC is greater than BC, we call it as Rinne positive and this is seen either in normal individuals or those who are having sensory neural hearing loss. But now those patients who are having a conductive hearing loss, the AC becomes less than BC. Then we call it as Rinne negative. Now we know conductive hearing loss but on tuning fork test can we understand or estimate the amount of hearing loss or the decibels of hearing loss? Yes. So if you have a patient with a Rinne's test which is negative at 256 hertz but the Rinne's test is positive on 512 hertz. The amount of airborne gap that you will see in this patient will be about 15 to 30 decibels. Some say 20 to 30, some say 15, uh, 15 to 30, you can take 15 also because it's easy to remember. Now if it is negative at 256 and 512, 
but if it is positive at 1024 which is the case in our question then the case, then the amount of hearing loss will be or the airborne gap will be 30 to 45 decibel and if it is negative at 1024 also then we are going to think that the hearing loss is 45 to 60 db so very clearly we have been given this clinical case scenario where trine is negative at 1000 to uh, no it is negative at 256 and 512 but positive at 1024 so the hearing or the decibel or threshold of hearing loss airborne gap is going to be 30 to 45 decibels so the answer is going to be 30 to 45 decibels okay Great. Now let's go to the next question. Identify the cancer in this HIV positive patient with a CD4 count of less than 150. Is this a squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, malignant melanoma or Kaposi sarcoma? Yesterday I was given that Burkitt's lymphoma as an option but then again in the recall in the chat box many students said no ma'am it was malignant melanoma in the option Burkitt's was not there. So we are still answer will not change the answer is still going to be the same what do you think is the answer going to be now? Yes so here you see that there is a pale pinkish bluish lobulated mass in the palate and in a patient who is HIV positive with a CD4 count which is less than 150 indicating there is a very high amount of immunosuppression and they are going to be susceptible to multiple carcinomas or neoplasms the most common neoplasm of the oral cavity that you can expect in a patient with HIV with the immunosuppression is going to be Kaposi sarcoma. So Kaposi sarcoma typically presents to you on the palate with this pale pinkish bluish lobulated mass. So if you get pale pink bluish lobulated mass you must think about Kaposi's sarcoma. Okay, now what about other lesions? How do other lesions look like and why are we not taking them as the answer? We know the answer is Kaposi sarcoma because the indicators are HIV, immunosuppression is there, most common and it is looking like Kaposi sarcoma on clinical picture. So everything is in favor of Kaposi, but baki kyu nahi hai? So squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma, both of them will typically present to you as ulceroproliferative growths and not lobulated mass. So if you see these are ulceroproliferated masses, you will see that the uh, uh, squamous cell carcinoma will present to you with rolled out edges and the basal cell carcinoma will typically present to you with rolled in edges. So they are not usually the sites of palatal involvement and they are rare sites of palatal involvement in, especially in patients with HIV. And then we have malignant melanoma which will present to you as a blackish mass or blackish discoloration mass in the palate that is the hallmark of a melanoma which will present to you as a black nevus or a blackish discoloration in the mass. So with this we know very clearly that our answer is Kaposi sarcoma there is no doubt. So abhi tak sare questions where there was no controversy we were clearly able to identify the answer for all these questions. So theek hai, that is done and dusted. Abhi dekhte hai, what is the question? Here yesterday when I was discussing there were a lot of people telling ma'am the image was not uh, same. The intensity of the mass shown was the same as that of brain parenchyma. They had shown us there was some defect in the base of skull. So I somehow found out this image to be very close to the image that I that is there in the examination. And I want you guys to help me with the uh, uh, with the image was it more or less same like this in the examination okay so i'm waiting for you all to uh, tell me that uh, did you get a similar image in your examination a child who had a head injury one year ago now presented with non-axial proptosis of the left eye identify the mass in the given scan so first of all whenever they're saying non-axial proptosis proptosis is <coughs> Yes, uh, the Panchi Sharma orbit was compressed. You can see the same thing over here. More or less SI tha, like it is not more compression hoga, shayad ya thoda kam compression hoga. But yeah, similar sa picture tha because I have not attended the exam. So for me to imagine what all you give as inputs is very difficult. But to the best possible, I am trying to correlate. So was it little bit like this? 
Okay, so whenever we talk of proptosis, it is outward movement of the eyeball. No ma'am, not this one. Okay, so we'll, we will solve this question irrespective of what was the image. Pele will go and understand things over the uh, clinical scenario that was given. They have given you that there was a history of head injury and after head injury, uh -oh, yes, there was a head, history of head injury. Yes, so we'll see how to solve this. There you're telling compression was from below. Theke, let's see. Now the patient presented to you with non-axial proptosis of the left eye. Identify the mass in the given scan. So first of all, when we are talking about axial proptosis, it usually indicates an orbital mass that is growing along the orbital axis. So it is a mass that is intraorbital when we talk of an axial proptotic lesion. Now when we are talking of pseudo tumor of the orbit, it is not a true tumor, but it is a tumor, it is an inflammatory or an infectious tissue that has proliferated in the orbit and hence this becomes an axial mass. It is not an, a non-axial mass, it is an axial mass. So we straight take this out from our options because our questions typically mention non-axial proptosis. So now they are telling to you that the child had history of head injury and now presented with proptosis. They have not mentioned to you about bleeding, about epistaxis, about frog face deformity, about uh, cranial nerve palsies. Nothing of that sort has been mentioned. So JNA is also ruled out. Juvenile age group male that is also not there. Now we are left with meningioma and mucosil. Now whenever we talk of meningioma there is hyperostosis. Deficiency is very very rare. I have gone through literature extensively and deeply since last night after having reviewed this question and after having taken the uh, you know after having taken input from many students meningioma post traumatic is very rare. The causation as a trauma to cause meningioma is a very rare entity and especially within 1, 2, 3 years it doesn't happen. It could happen maybe 10 years or 15 years down the lane and even that is a rare entity. Now if they had to give you meningioma they would give you classical things about meningioma like a dural tail sign. They would give you adult and not a child. They would not give you meningioma presenting to you with proptosis and if they would want frontal meningioma they would give you psychiatric or neuropsychiatric manifestations nothing of that has been given in your question so ye sab nahi hai to kyu rare ka soche jo common ho sakta hai wo sochte na then the common occurring condition here could be mucosil because post trauma there is a very high possibility that the drainage of the sinuses could have get got got obstructed and that could have resulted in retention of secre in the sinuses and this could slowly expand and do mucosil cause erosion yes they cause erosion they are known to cause erosion so can we see defect in the base of skull yes can we see the defect in medial wall of the orbit yes can we see a defect in the floor of the orbit yes for supply as the mucosil expands you can have these defects so uh, most likely in all possibilities, I meningioma kyu answer karu? Matlab kya favorable hai meningioma ko answer karne ke liye? Kuch nahi. So my answer will go straight again to mucosil. Okay? So frontoethmoid mucosil or ethmoid mucosil, jo bhi option tha, your answer will be mucosil. Kyunki trauma, child mein, ethmoid sinus involvement, proptosis of the eye is very very common occurrence. Erosion is a very common occurrence in a mucosil. Yes, sayak, actual cracking because mucosils are known to expand. The overlying bone becomes thinned out and on palpating you get that actual cracking feeling. So yes, sab itna classic hai to we will go directly to mucosil as our answer. We will not take rare entities as a common one and common things we cannot miss commonly in the examination and lose out our marks on. So our answer is going to be mucosil. So I hope everybody got this. Is pe bohat charcha hua kal and I am uh, I also have gone through it in detail so that I will give you the right answer for your uh, for your review. So kal me jo recall hua tha to what I am recalling today there have been significant changes because uh, of course I got a lot of input from the students and because of that I was able to get more closer to the questions that was asked in your actual examination. Okay, an old patient presented with change in voice, he was diagnosed with a cancer and underwent an intervention. 
following which surgery is the intervention done so they are showing to you that there is a tracheostomy abhi i don't know ki tracheostomy tha ya tracheostomy with tracheoesophageal prosthesis tha that i don't know now here the question is they have mentioned to you two very important things agar fir bhi agar theek hai tp tha nahi tha kuch bhi tha that that we just we just keep it away for a moment and let's just analyze the question again they telling to you that there is a patient who presented to you with change in voice why did they tell you about that he was diagnosed as a cancer so voice change ho raha hai cancer what will you think of you'll think about laryngeal cancer laryngeal carcinoma if you have to do an intervention you will do a permanent tracheostomy now when you're doing a permanent tracheostomy why would you ever choose a percutaneous route you would definitely choose a open route first because you're going to do a high tracheostomy number 2 when you're doing a total laryngectomy at the same time you will do tracheostomy you're not going to do two separate procedures ki na pehle परक्यूटेनियस ट्रेक्योस्टोमी कर लूं उसके बाद लारेंजेक्टोमी कर लूं नहीं दोनों साथ साथ ही होता है सो विथ this also we know that this is probably an open surgical trachostomy which has been done for total laryngectomy तो इतना सब कुछ हिंट के बाद आई विल नॉट गो और चेंज माय ऑप्शन फ्रॉम टोटल लैरिंजेक्टोमी टू परक्यूटेनियस ट्रेक्योस्टोमी रीजंस बीइंग वेरी सिंपल वन परक्यूटेनियस ट्रेक्योस्टोमी इज नॉट अ डायरेक्ट इंडिकेशन इन अ पेशेंट विद लैरिंजल कैंसर इफ वी आर डूइंग अ टोटल लैरिंजेक्टोमी इन अ पेशेंट विद लैरिंजल कैंसर वी आर गोइंग टू डू अ हाई ट्रेक्योस्टोमी एंड अ परमानेंट वन व्हिच रिक्वायर्स यू टू डू अ ओपन प्रोसीजर रादर देन अ परक्यूटेनियस प्रोसीजर ओके सो Yes, so uh, now the question का language क्या है वो पता नहीं है मुझे If they had asked you what intervention is done on this patient in the image standard tracheostomy होना चाहिए but following which surgery ये किया गया है then the answer will be total laryngectomy. So what was the question? Will मतलब uh, लैंग्वेज क्या था उसके हिसाब से चेंज हो जाएगा आंसर नाउ इफ दे हैव आस्ट यू फॉलोइंग विथ सर्जरी देन योर आंसर विल बी टोटल एरेंटेक्टमी बट व्हाट इंटरवेंशन इज डन योर देन योर आंसर विल बी स्टैंडर्ड ट्रैकोस्टमी ओके सो यू पीपल ट्राई टू थिंक रिकॉल थोड़ा और थोड़ा सा अगर पता चल जाए तो लेट मी नो इन द चैट बॉक्स सो दैट आई कैन अगेन गेट मोर क्लोजर एंड हेल्प द स्टूडेंट्स और अपियरिंग फॉर द नेक्स्ट एग्जामिनेशन गेट इन द करेक्ट जोन ऑफ आंसर्स ओके तो थोड़े लोगों ने बोला था सम पीपल हैड टोल्ड मी दैट देर वाज एन इमेज विद टीपी व्हाइल सम ऑफ यू ब्लंटली सेड नो मैम ऐसा नहीं था बट जस्ट फॉर द सेक दैट if it was a tep it would look something like this where you put a tracheoesophageal prosthesis between the trachea and the esophagus and it is done again for total laryngectomy so tp ho na ho my answer is total laryngectomy but again if they have asked only what is this procedure done for this procedure is standard tracheostomy theek hai okay Which of the following is not an indication for the following device? अभी इसमें कोई controversy नहीं है This is a standard question again. ये तो बहुत बार ही आता है ये तो हमने बहुत बार discuss भी किया है We have talked in length about this question many many times. So what is not an indication for this following device? Pulmonary toileting, upper airway assessment, acute upper airway obstruction, prolonged mechanical ventilation. Yes, I am waiting for your answers in the chat box. so what you see here is a portex tracheostomy tube and this portex tracheostomy tube is used for portex tracheostomy tube is used in a patient with tracheostomy now there are multiple types of tracheostomy tubes but the commonly that we use is one of that is portex tracheostomy tube now this tracheostomy is tube is used for any patient who is doing undergoing a tracheostomy now what are the indications of this procedure first of all when do you do a tracheostomy whenever there is an upper airway obstruction upper airway obstruction means in whenever there is an obstruction in the nasal cavity or the nasopharynx or the oropharynx or the larynx to bypass the upper airway you are going to do a tracheostomy and you are going to secure the airway so number 1 any anything that is going to obstruct the upper airway so whenever you have obstruction of upper airway it can be acute obstruction you are going to do 
tracheostomy number two patients on mechanical ventilation now if somebody is on a mechanical ventilation requiring ventilatory support for more than seven days to ten days would you like him to have an endotracheal tube like this or would you like to have a tracheostomy tube like this see the only problem is with the endotracheal tube you see from mouth until the tracheal carina you have so much of dead space so to clear the secretions to be able to give a good pulmonary lavage or toileting is difficult second thing is the tube may get blocked with secretions requiring you to remove the tube and reinsert the tube which can again be very difficult process to do again and again but a tracheostomy tube can be kept in situ for days and even months requiring no change it's a smaller tube it is a shorter tube with a less amount of dead space with better pulmonary toileting so anybody who requires mechanical ventilation for a prolonged period of time for more than 7 10 days we usually shift from the endotracheal tube to a tracheostomy tube so mechanical ventilation prolonged is definitely definitely an indication for tracheostomy so bahut sare icu patients we keep doing tracheostomies because they are already on endotracheal tube since one week 10 days and now we, there is they are not improving any further so we are going to change it to a tracheostomy tube and also the need for sedation decreases when you do tracheostomy because there is no oropharyngeal irritation with the endotracheal tube they have irritation so they are sedated but as soon as we do tracheostomy the sedation requirement goes down the mental ventilatory requirements go down and weaning off from ventilator can also be given a trial for so these are all the advantages of tracheostomy in a patient who is on mechanical ventilation the third one is pulmonary toileting pulmonary toileting of course is going to be better in a tracheostomy tube because it's having a reduced dead space versus endotracheal tube which has a very high amount of dead space so all these three are de definitely indications for upper airway assessment just for assessing the upper airway why do we need tracheostomy no unless the patient is in strider and has come to you with strider then you do tracheostomy and then you will assess but otherwise if i just want to assess upper airway in any patient say for snoring or for sleep apnea or for any mass or for laryngomalacia or for uh, subglottic stenosis or for supraglottic carcinoma anything i want to assess an upper airway i don't need a tracheostomy i will put a fiber optic scope from the nose go to the nasopharynx oropharynx hypopharynx larynx and i can visualize the entire upper airway without having a tracheostomy tube so upper airway assessment is not an indication the rest of the three are an indication for tracheostomy so saya pulmonary toileting exactly ka matlab hota hai secretions ko suction karna now if i have a endotracheal tube i'll put the suction from this and it has to go from mouth to the larynx to the trachea from there till carina to kitna dead space hai this much but if i put a tracheostomy tube here and if i put my suction machine or suction catheter from here it will go directly from the tracheostomy tube into the carina and will be able to suction out all the pulmonary secretions so dead space is high in an endotracheal tube and low with the tracheostomy tube and these patients who are bedridden who are on ventilator they have lot of stasis of secretion when we are awake when we are walking when we are mobilizing ourselves there is a mechanism by which the secretions or the lung secretions get absorbed but when they are bedridden there is stasis of secretion and somebody has to suck them out and the suction procedure happens better with a tracheostomy tube that suctioning is called as pulmonary toileting okay so sayak upper airway assessment bronchoscopy se bhi kara ja sakta hai but when we talk of bronchoscopy we mean upper and lower airway not necessarily that only upper airway अगर हम लोग लैरिंग्स तक ही देखते हैं दैट इज अपर एयरवे बट इफ वी गो बियॉन्ड द लैरिंग्स इन टू द ट्रेकिया इन टू द फर्स्ट लेवल ब्रॉन्कोस दैट इज लोअर एयरवे ओके सो फॉर ब्रॉन्कोस्कोपी यू कैन डू अपर एंड लोअर एयरवे एंड यू मस्ट हैव सीन ब्रॉन्कोस्कोपी के लिए कोई करता है ट्रेकोस्टमी नहीं तो अपर एयरवे असेसमेंट के लिए क्यों चाहिए होगा ट्रेकोस्टमी था तो नहीं ओके फाइन सो आई थिंक दैट वॉज अगेन सिंपल क्वेश्चन तो अभी तक सिर्फ एक कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी आया तो वो कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी भी हम लोग सॉल्व कर दिए हाउ टू गेट टू म्यूकोसिन सो आई थिंक देर इज नो कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी अबाउट दैट क्वेश्चन एनी मोर फाइन लेट्स गो टू द नेक्स्ट वन पेशेंट हैज एन लार्ज टॉन्सिल एंड इज अनेबल टू स्वेलो पेशेंट इज ऑल्सो कंप्लेनिंग ऑफ ईयर पेन लाइकली सोर्स ऑफ ईयर पेन इज 
auricular branch of the vagus nerve, tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve, greater auricular nerve, mandibular nerve. Again, this is simple question. ये तो ऐसे इतना repeat हो चुका है this question and this similar sort of questions. You need to know the topic referred otalgia. अगर referred otalgia पता है तो you will be able to answer this. Yes, I am waiting for the answers. Referred otalgia is the cause of ear pain is not in the ear but it is at a distant site. From a distant site we are having pain radiating to the ear then we call it as referred otalgia. So for referred otalgia what could be the cause? So typically here the question is talking to you about enlarged tonsils and unable, unable to swallow. What does this say? This tells us that this patient is having tonsillitis. Now tonsil is supplied by which nerve? Tonsil is supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve. Glossopharyngeal nerve gives a branch called as the tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve. This tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve is called as Jacobson's nerve. And this Jacobson's nerve supplies the middle ear and it is responsible for causing rapid. Otalgia. So tonsillitis, it is via the glossopharyngeal nerve, which branch? The tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve. So there is no doubt on this. If the question would have been larynx or hypopharynx, then it would be auricular branch of vagus nerve. If it was anything in the face or the oral cavity or the teeth or the anterior two-thirds of tongue, then the answer would be mandibular nerve, which is a branch of your trigeminal nerve. So here we are not having any of the oral cavity or the hypopharynx or larynx lesion. We are having oropharynx lesion. Oropharynx is supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve. Hence the answer is tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve. Okay. A student is yawning in the afternoon class and got stuck in an open mouth. And they, I think they have told you that this muscle is attached to the articular surface of the condyle of the mandible. So which muscle is responsible for doing this? Masseter, lateral pterygoid, medial pterygoid or the temporalis. <clears throat> yes, I am waiting for the answers from all of you. See, there are two things. The two things that you should know in terms of terminology is trismus and second one is lockjaw. So, trismus ka matlab hota hai, the meaning of trismus is inability to open the mouth. If I cannot open the mouth, that is called as trismus. So, inability, I can't open the mouth is trismus. But if my mouth is open, I am not able to close, that is called as your lockjaw. Trismus happens commonly due to involvement of the medial pterygoid muscle first. So whenever the medial pterygoid goes into spasm because of a peritonsillar abscess, parapharyngeal abscess or Ludwig's angina or any cellulitis, we can have trismus. So we are not discussing trismus at the moment. We are discussing of lockjaw. So when we are talking about lockjaw, Yes, uh, Ajay Singh, the patient is unable to close the mouth and his mouth has got stuck in the open mouth, open mouth position. So what are we talking about? We're talking about lockjaw. Here when we see the muscles of mastication, we see that masseter, temporalis, medial pterygoid, all of these will help in closing the jaw. Whereas opener of the jaw is only lateral pterygoid. So when the lateral pterygoid opens the mouth, say the patient was yawning excessively and it went into spasm and it dislocated the condylar surface of the mandible from the TMJ, it will get displaced and as a result of that displacement, it will get locked and because it's locked, the patient now cannot close his mouth. So what is happening? This lateral pterygoid muscle is attached to the mandibular condyle. If you see here, it is attached to the condyle of the mandible and because it is attached to condyle of mandible, excessive stretching of this muscle will cause displacement of this, uh, you know, say if this is your temporomandibular joint, the condyle will get displaced from the articular surface and will come forward and get locked causing lockjaw.
okay so the answer for this question is lateral pterygoid so lateral pterygoid will keep the mouth open because it's under spasm because of excessive yawning causing dislocation of the tm joint okay so theek hai abhi tak was good now this was a question which yesterday so many students wrote to me ma'am there was a swelling not behind the pinna in front of pinna there was not lifting of the lo lobule of the ear wo nahi tha hyperpigmentation tha koi bola nodular tha koi bola nodular nahi tha koi bola dense tha koi bola soft tha so there have been so many answers that i have got from students regarding this one particular question that I am also still not able to understand कि exactly question में क्या पूछा गया था So I will tell you what are the probabilities and what could be the answer based on these probabilities. So they have told you that there is a mass which is dense, mobile and nodular as shown in the image below. What is the likely diagnosis? Now when we are talking about a dense mobile and a nodular mass jaw tumor straight away goes from our option because tumor or originating from the jaw bone will usually be hard it will not be nodular and it will not be mobile so theek hai chala gaya out gone now second thing possibility of dermoid cyst sebaceous cyst ho sakta hai if they would have mentioned cystic masses but they have told you that it is a dense solid mass now some people say the word dense was not there madam some people say that you know this punctum was seen or a hyperpigmentation was seen i don't know matlab aise wala swelling in the preauricular area if it is there with the blackish hyperpigmentation then you must think about a sebaceous cyst okay so if they have given you a swelling with blackish hyperpigmentation in the center and if they have given you that there was a uh, not see sebaceous cyst can sometimes be nodular not always nodular they can sometimes be nodular they are soft swellings and they are having a punctum on their surface so if there is a punctum now some people said punctum was there if punctum is there then your answer is straight sebaceous cyst there is no doubt on that बट अगर पंक्टम नहीं था क्वेश्चन में अगर यू आर श्योर दैट देर वॉज नो ब्लैक पंक्टम रॉक स्टार तो ठीक है पंक्टम नहीं था क्वेश्चन में तो फिर सेबेशियस सिस्ट को रूल आउट कर देते हैं देन इट इज नॉट सेबेशियस सिस्ट अभी बच गया डर्मोइड एंड पैरोटेड ग्लैंड ट्यूमर डर्मोइड्स टिपिकली विल अकर एट द एंगल ऑफ फ्यूजन ऑफ बोन्स और एंगल वेर दर ज्वाइनिंग एस्पेशली इन मिड लाइन लैटरल डर्मोइड्स आर नॉट वेरी कॉमनली सीन एंड दे आर नॉट they don't present to you with a nodular mobile swelling dermoids will usually present to you with some ectodermal component being visible on the outside like a small hair follicle like a small teeth or something like an ectodermal component dikhai dega that will tell you that this is dermoid and it should be somewhere in the midline at the line of angle of fusion of bones yahan pe there is no angle of fusion of bones see mandible ke ramus angle of mandible we are having so which bones are fusing there is nothing of that sort happening here so again to take dermoid i will be a little hesitant for me this seems to be a parotid gland tumor now some people are telling the lobule was not lifted it's not necessary that for all parotid gland tumor the lobule of the pinna should be lifted if the deep lobe or the tail of the parotid is involved then you will typically see that the a lobule is lifted but it is not mandatory that early parotid tumors or superficial parotid tumors will present to you with lifting of the lobule sign so it is not specific now what was exactly asked in the question i am not sure but if the word was nodular mobile and dense all of them fit for very well for parotid gland tumor the location fits very well for parotid gland tumor and uh, if these were the words given i would probably go in and choose for a parotid gland tumor yes lobule was not lifted ajay singh theek hai it could be superficial lobe tumor which could just be a early tumor so only if the deep lobe or the tail of the parotid of this or there is a deeper infiltration or a large tumor then you can see that it's not a mandatory rule that for all parotid tumors you must see this elevation or lifting up of the lobule okay so theek hai so that completes the recall of whatever questions i had if you have any more questions please feel free to leave uh, 
the comments in the chat box so that now whenever we are compiling all of them together when we release it on the app we will be able to give you more accurate questions and the students who are appearing for the forthcoming examinations will be benefited with more accurate questions and more accurate options so that they when they prepare for their examination know the pattern of questions so if you see from ENT point of view some of them were standard questions some of them were new questions and mostly all of them were image based questions and practical questions so I think that if your concepts you have learnt it right then you will be able to do everything in ENT very well agar kuch rataya hai ya fir aise hi superficial padaya hai then maybe few questions you can do and few questions you cannot but all those who people who read the concepts in depth and did that they will be able to answer all of them very easily uh yashoda das uh, inict i think is going to happen in may i don't know why the notification is not yet released some people are saying 5th or 7th of may I am not very confident on this but this is what I have heard of. Hopefully you should have the announcement coming soon. Yes, please start studying if you are preparing for INICT. It's a good choice chance for redemption. If in case you haven't been able to do your best at NEET PG, abhi bhi time hai, you can pull your socks up and you can do your uh, uh, you know, INICT much better than what you did for NEET and usme really you have like 1000 plus seats and uh, if you do really well, you will be able to grab that chance and not many people will be in that race because abhi to sab log thak gaye hai and everyone will not be motivated. So all those really motivated ones who continue to study, continue to revise will be the ones who will crack INICT. Okay then, I'll take your leave and wishing you good luck, wishing you lots of love. Please take care of yourself, exam is done. Don't think about the rank. Abhi ke liye khush raho, khate raho, peete raho, enjoy karo, must maze karo and just enjoy what you're doing at the moment, okay? Baad mein zindagi wapis se circle mein chalega, cycle mein chalega, we will have things to do ahead. But for now, this is it. Finish, done, dusted, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.